Hi, I'm Janet from Precision Graphics and Marketing, and I'll be one of your hosts on this episode of Chick Chat. Chick Chat is a place where we celebrate the perfect fusion of style and adventure. Jeeps have long been synonymous with ruggedness, freedom, and the spirit of adventure. And who says women can't embrace all of that and more? And I'm Natalie from High Lift Off Road, where you dream it and we build it. Would you like to join the Chick Chat JTS team? If you're a woman who's passionate about Jeeps and would love to be a part of a podcast, you'll need, all you need is a smartphone, internet connection, and you need to send us an email at info at jeeptalkshow.com. You know, Janet, we are looking for other really awesome women like ourselves. Absolutely. And we just invite women Jeepers. If you want to talk and just hang out with Natalie and I, just let us know because we're fun. We're fun to hang out with. We are fun. And if you have a cat, even more enjoyable for all of us. <laughs> that might be one of the <laughs> three guys may know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And Janet, what are we going to talk tonight about on so, this episode? Yeah. <clears throat> on tonight's episode, we have some new stories. We have a new color alert. Oh boy. That we're going to talk about. I'm excited to hear about this. Um, Jeep ownership by the numbers. Just mm -hmm. thinking about this, what is your take on this? Is it more women than men? Is it more men than women? We'll talk Not about that sure. here in a minute. We're going to find out. And then there's an event of the week. Trail Hero is happening this week. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show Chit Chat with Natalie and Janet. Can't wait. All right, guys. So yes, as Janet just said, we have a new color alert from Jeep. So what do you think it is, Janet? Without, Because I know you don't know this one because I kind of sprang this one on you a little bit ago. So do you know what the color is yet? No, I don't. And I I mean, we've already done like the pink, that fuchsia-y right? pink. And was it Tuscadero? I think that's Tuscadero, what it's and she's making Tuscadero a comeback. Pink. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, is yeah, that what we're talking about. about today? We're not going to talk about Tuscadero okay. for a change on our right, special women's show. How funny is that, right? I know. <laughs> well, the new color alert, guys, is the Heritage 41 concept color, which is a military style olive drab green paint option Ooh. for the 2025 Jeep Wrangler and Gladiator. So okay. the color is inspired by the olive drab Willys <laughs> Jeep of World War II and beyond. So I think it's pretty neat that they want to bring it back. And I know Jeep is, you know, they're they come up with these great concepts, right? For different trim packages and names. And I mean, right. why not bring up 41? Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, they started out as a military vehicle. So why not they did. honor that with that color? I have the Oscar Mike edition. Um, oh, cool. What is my that? KKU. Um, it has like a little badge on the side. Yes. <laughs> it's it has, all about the badge, it's just, right? <laughs> it's, there's a little badge on the side and then there's, um, it's stitched into the seats. I have leather seats and it says Oscar Mike on the seat. And I think it has something to do with the suspension, but that's long gone by now. So, oh yes, they <laughs> have their true, own. That's true. <laughs> We're a little modified at this point, aren't we? Just a little bit. Just a little. That's a tad. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what's neat is the 41, that's what they're calling it, the 41. Um, this color was inspired by the Jeep 41 concept, which was unveiled at da, 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 the 2022 Easter Jeep Safari. Ooh. And the concept vehicle was a modern take on the classic Jeep Willie with a, I, they call it the drab matte green yeah. exterior, even though I don't think it looks real drab to me, but we do have a picture, a couple pictures, photos, or I'm sorry, guys, pictures included um, that you guys can see on the jeeptalkshow.com um, under this episode. But it does also have, which I think is pretty neat, the digi camo interior with a tan soft top and black powder coated steel bumpers. So Ooh, unfortunately, I'm with this, I don't top. know if they're actually like coming that. out with this concept, <laughs> but the color for sure is coming out in the 2025. I think they should just release both personally. I, um, yeah, I think so too. I think it'd be really, oh, really cool. Okay, so I see the I see the pictures now, guys. If yeah. you're if you're listening online, you got to go check out these pictures. That's actually really cool. I it's like really color. cool. They yeah. really paid, I think, a lot of homage to the actual Willie itself from World War II, from the from the wheels to the color to the bumper. Um, you know, these concept vehicles they come out you know years in advance, and you know we might we might see this one on the road. They did make this one Tony's favorite, the four by E. Um, so Tony, I know you're listening. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, the four by eight, I know they're still trying to make that on every household type vehicle. I'm just not a fan, everybody. Sorry. I like my, my fuel powered, but the color Me is too. really cool. So, um, I mean, I would entertain it. Definitely would entertain yeah. that. 
Absolutely. It looks really cool. Um, is it going to come with specific features that are just not made yet? For that so that 41 concept is not coming out, but just the color. So the right. interior, that's, that's going to still remain the concept. Um, but hopefully, you know, concepts turn into the dream turns into a concept into reality. So we'll have to see how yes. it goes. Um, just when I was at Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion, um, I should have said this one earlier, but I was with a concept vehicle on a trail ride. Um, and it was so neat to see it. And, but you know, they don't even have a VIN number. Um, and half the time they're destroyed when they're done mm -hmm. working with them. So these beautiful oh vehicles, it was the J8. Oh my gosh, this thing was amazing. Um, it was a two door gladiator full size. And I was like, you're going to destroy this in like a month. What? So, um, that makes me sad. It's what they have to do, but it was a beautiful yeah. rig and I'm so happy I got to see it. So, um, these concept vehicles, especially when you go to EJS, which I think we might have an announcement here in a little bit, um, you yeah. get to really see them. So it's a really neat deal. But of course, other Jeep classics will be making a comeback in 2025, like the Jeep talk show favorite, Firecracker Red, the yes. Anvil, the Black, the Bright White, the, <laughs> the Phantom Blue, the High Lift, I mean, Hydro Blue, oh. and Granite Crystal. So you, you also have your classic options. Um, but I really hope people step outside the box and get this, the really cool 41 uh, olive green. I don't want to say drab, but it is drab. I know drab stands for something. If you guys know, write in. Okay. Let us know. Teach us something today. <laughs> I feel like, and I feel like when you say that word, it has to be like morose. Drab. And like drab. <laughs> so speaking of, we're going to segue really quickly down one of our hole, rabbit holes, right, Janet? So EJS yes. 2025 is coming. Is that coming for one of us on this show? It is coming for me. I was Yay! just recently able oh to secure gosh being able to get out there. So I am super excited. They're still planning involved, um, like, you know, trying to find a place to stay um, <laughs> Always. and seeing if I can convince, you know, maybe some friends to get a two car hauler. And so that way Charlie doesn't have to actually make the drive out there. Absolutely. That'd um, be amazing. <clears throat> I'll see if I can be, um, you know, I'll pay for the trailer and some of your gas if you'll just help me out. So I won't have to drive it all the way out there. Yes. Yeah. So how far away but, is Moab from where you are? Um, that's a great question. I know it's really, really far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's, if we're going straight through and, and let me look it up real quick. Um, if we're going straight through, it's, I mean, it's a haul. So it's here, probably over 10 hours, isn't it? From my house, I'm, yeah, I'm going. I'm going as fast as my phone will let me. Oh, you're good. Uh, you're it good. is 16 hours and 55 okay. minutes, so right under okay. 17 All hours. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to drive my Jeep that far. <laughs> no, especially through New Mexico. And if anybody, you know, I've heard that you know when you drive through New Mexico, and I've driven through New Mexico to get to Colorado, mm -hmm. it is not. Um, they don't take care of their roads very oh, well. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So New Mexico is kind of like if you can just make it through that state. I think you're good, but yeah, New Mexico, y'all can get, can you fix your roads, please? Cause some of us PSA. are just driving our Jeeps. <laughs> exactly. A PSA right now. Well, I can't wait I to hear more about excited. your planning stages and I'm so excited for you. And, um, Michael Bailey, I want to go to EJS. Okay. So yes. here we are. So Natalie and I can wheel together. Please let <laughs> we her have to wheel together. <laughs> Yes, so I mean, we are planning EJS, guys. for next year also, but, you know, if we can go to EJS together, the Chick Chat team, we part of the that. team going to EJS. That's so if you guys, are, if anyone's planning on going to EJS, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear and maybe try to plan a meetup. Yes, so, absolutely. Anyway, so, so excited for you. Thank you so much for sharing. I, I had to sell the beans for you. I had to celebrate you. So, um, all right. So moving on to our, I, I feel like Dolly Parton in nine to five. Like I wish I could click my nails right now, but Jeep ownership <laughs> by the numbers. Let's get a little uh, nerdy on us a little bit here with some statistics, shall we? Yeah. So um, a study was done and this is a little bit old. They have not redone it just yet um, by Hedges and Company Automotive Market Research. So I was doing some research and just trying to think of, you know, some different things I've always thought about when it came to Jeeps and honestly, Jeeps and women. And one of those is what really are the numbers of percentages in regards to ownership? So women versus men, because in reality, that's, we are, it's women versus men. Um, right. So with Wranglers 2007 to 2018 JK. So the numbers are in and it is a 28% female owned versus 72% male owned. So I thought that was really interesting because I actually thought it would have been more. 
Um, Me too. Now I know, right? So I've always, I mean, that's all I've ever had is why well, I had my one JK so far, but um, I just feel like I see so many women driving Jeeps on, you know, just even if it's the mall crawler, totally fine. It's Jeep ownership, right. no matter how we slice it. But I really right. thought it would have been more. And this is pulled from a customer database of 300,000 Jeep owners. So this is an interesting poll. Um, I mean, just because of the demographic, I don't know where these people are, you know, touching base from like, what's the state percentage. Um, but right. I think this is just, uh, I will just say the continental U S at this point, but I just thought it was interesting. 28%, um, versus 72% for the JK and then the JLU. So starting in 2018, because that was a split year. So 2018 and 2021, we did have an increase 30% female, 70% male. So I wonder with today's numbers, cause now I feel like more than ever it's, it's female. It really Absolutely. is. COVID yeah. changed and the game. It really did. And I'm surprised to see the J. I mean, I, I am preferential to the JK. I know you are Me as too. well. <laughs> People love their JLs, but I prefer the JK. Uh, I have two of them. So, um, you know, I'll take up some of those numbers, but that's just surprising to me. I think I feel like I see, uh, you know, when we go out and, and I know you see this too, Natalie, when we go out to like these Jeep meetups or we go mm -hmm. to, you know, the one-on-ones, I do see a lot of women. It's a lot of in women. In a JK. Yeah. So I, those numbers are just surprising to me. That's interesting. Sometimes I feel like women um, also might be more gutsy to take a 101 beginner class more than men. That's something I've been I, seeing more and more just like being out and talking to people. I was at an event last week and it was strictly just a pavement event. Great meetup at a barbecue place called Mission Barbecue, which is a military based mm -hmm. barbecue restaurant here in the Cincinnati area. Um, and it was more women they're solo, like actual driving their Jeep solo or their partner was, you know, their passenger more so than men. And it's really making a turn. So I'm really hoping we get some new numbers coming out. Yes. Um, why not? We need to know. Yeah, we, we need more women who are Jeep owners. And whether, again, like Natalie said, whether you're taking it to the mall or you're taking it to the trail, we yeah. just need more women in that driver's seat. And, um, you know, if you want to modify the crap out of it, or if you just want to leave it stock, that's totally up to you. Add but a grab handle. Should... <laughs> yeah. It's the number one yes. first modification that we see is Absolutely. the grab handle. Um, yes. Which I get it. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Um, I was just talking to my massage therapist today because I think I tweaked my shoulder oh, in no. hot springs, pulling in and out of the Jeep oh, over and over happen. again. So yeah, she was like, well, can you get in the Jeep any other way? No, <laughs> no. If you could, know. you would. I can use this arm. But she's <laughs> like, we're well, just going to transfer the pain. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. So <laughs> do you feel awkward stop. getting in your passenger side? Or is that just me? Absolutely. Okay, I don't right. know what to do. Like I'll grab, uh, yeah. you know, the grab handle. And then I'm like, do I grab the seat? Do I grab the B pillar? Like, how do I get it? And then it's like this whole like step in. Yes. I feel like I've lost all motor function. When I try to become a passenger, it's just not happening. And I just, guys, it's the funniest sight. So if you are with me when we're wheeling, I'm going to be passenger princess. Make sure you just take a peek because it's just weird when that all it was a weird sloth trying to get in. So uh, the grab handle, grabbing. grab handle, grab handle. <laughs> Yes. And we are on YouTube, guys, ladder. so check out the YouTube because um, this is a site tonight with all the motions. So. Yes, we're, we both talk a lot with our hands. So We do, we fun. do. The, the sloth, you know, it's it's great. So, yeah, yeah, so I just thought that was really interesting, Jeep by the number, Jeep ownership by the numbers. Um, would like to maybe dive deeper if for a future um, follow-up segment, was maybe go by state and see how it goes. Um, I mean, I feel like just because I'm here, I, I see so many, but I'm sure, I mean, you're in Texas, so everything is bigger right. in Texas, let's be honest. Yes. Uh, so I'm sure your numbers are outstanding. <laughs> What's funny is I was driving down the road the other day and it's, I was thinking about people that don't live in Texas or have not visited. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how many trucks are on the road. Oh yeah. And I was at an intersection at just a red light and there's like truck, 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 Jeep, maybe another Jeep, but it was all trucks and like maybe one sedan. But I do feel like the numbers in Texas would be a little bit higher because you're, you have a we're all about, <laughs> yeah, we're all about like lifted vehicles and getting down the road and be able to see. 
Absolutely. You're the curve buster of the classroom yeah. for sure. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. Well, thanks for entertaining that numbers moment for me. I don't know. I get really into math and I really shouldn't because honestly, it's not my favorite, but I kind of got into that one. So thank you for but that. It's good to see the <laughs> statistics on it and see like what, at, maybe with this new color that's coming out, it may not appeal to women. It may. I wonder. May yeah. Who knows? You know, they're trying to turn around their marketing and, and try to appeal to more buyers because they're you know, kind of in a, in a slump. We are with in their a slump. sales. Yeah. And so turning, turning this out, I'm, immediately I'm thinking like what accent colors can go on that, you know, right. you know army green Jeep. And so, um, yeah, hopefully we'll see more women out there rocking it. I do feel like the color for fall right now is all about like the earth tone. So maybe yes. here we are earth tones and all yes. different browns and you go with the olives and here the we olives are. and the khakis together. Very this aesthetically is why this pleasing. Is chat, by the way, <laughs> we talk about colors. We, we have to add in the fashion, the color schemes and everything has to kind of correspond, right? <laughs> the accents and everything. Yes. What is your accent color on your Jeep? Mine is rose gold, which is my favorite color. Oh, As you can see, it's even nice. my company emblem is rose gold. And I found a really good vinyl that just exemplifies yes. the concept of it. And when I had my coils and beadlocks powder coated, and I, Gary, you're the best powder coater out there. And he is super patient with me, Gary. We love you. Um, we, he did one pass at it and showed it to me. And I was like, it looks like a penny. They look oh. great, but the oh, color is yeah. really off. So he acid washed them, stripped them, and they did, did this like tricolor powder coat with this candy coat on top, oh, cool. and it just perfect. And I have yet to send him the picture of my beadlock ring after oh. Hot Springs that is oh. basically stripped. <laughs> this is why I, I totally wondering because this is why I don't want to wheel mine yet because my ring is so perfect right now and I know what's going to happen yes. in five days I'm like no <laughs> I think that was like me other than me finding out I was two wheels off the ground is going to my driver you know front tire and looking at the v-lock ring and just you feeling defeated but um Gary you love me so I will probably be purchasing two more beadlock rings one for my spare and then one for the driver and then Gary if you'll just powder coat it for me again, I hope you wrote down the formula because I'm coming back. We gotta go to EJS like a shiny penny, you know? Yes, yes. I love I need the some... rose gold. I have not seen that around here. I, I feel like you know yes. a lot of like the grays. They do like the hot pinks or even red mm -hmm. or black um, or like the same gray. Uh, so I yeah. like that rose gold. Very cool. Very yes, cool. Yes, yes. It's um, very mine is the gray. gray. Yeah. yeah, mine's the gray. So gray and black, but the cage on the inside is like that really dark dark like gunmetal gray or battleship gray Ooh, actually matches I like that. the cat which i wish he was around but um and because bill sign gray is the bill sign gray essentially so um, right, i right. really really like it and i didn't know i would so red and gray here we are a lot of people yes. just stick with the black or red on red um you have to be a little bit unique so why not right. i've never really been a pink girl but yeah, the that's... rose gold just kind of stands out to me so we've gone through several different iterations of the shades and the logos but i think yeah. i've really rested on something like i've bought like 10 rolls of vinyl from my <laughs> supplier just in case yes. something happens i can always replace it so yeah if we're always trying new concepts on on the company vehicle <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I'm going to definitely uh, zoom in on your photos now because now I'm super interested in the rose gold. So I did rose gold yes. hair once about five years ago. So it was all the rage like five or six yeah. years ago. And I was like, and I was still platinum blonde. And it was a great transition period from going from blonde. I always go then to like a dark purple. And I was like, well, if I'm mm -hmm. going to do it now, it's time to try it. And oh yeah. my gosh, I, it only lasted for maybe a week for me because it just didn't hold yeah. in my hair. But oh, I loved it. It was so cool. Yeah. So yeah, you, I love it. And a lot, of gold, you know. a lot of manufacturers are for some reason phasing out that color. So I'm trying to buy up everything that I can. And so when we did the powder coat, he couldn't just get rose gold from his supplier. He had to oh, mix gotcha. different powders to get to this color. And um, yes, I hope he wrote it down because I'll yes. be coming back. <laughs> it is a science. Powder coating really is. And um, I hats off to all of our powder coaters. Like I, I love mine and I totally get it. So when you find a good one, hold on tight. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I, so. Every time I come out there, I'm like, here's a smoothie or here's, you know, a little treat, you know, <laughs> we love you, yes. Yes. <laughs> for real. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Well, I'm sure we might maybe see a rose gold at Trail Hero coming up this week. So there is a really big event going on um, in a park close to my heart is Sand Hollow um, State Park in Hurricane, Utah. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Trail Hero, Janet. I, I just heard about it recently. There's a female yeah. wheeler that I follow on Facebook and Instagram that she is getting ready to go out there. So I'm excited. Oh, awesome. to see it. It's really neat. And I, you know, I kind of nosedive down the meaning behind it. Like I thought, I thought it was almost kind of like King of the Hammers a little bit racing going on. Mm -hmm. Definitely not so much more behind this event than I ever could have imagined. Um, from just going out there back in May, I did learn a little bit. Um, there's a lot of military appreciation and veteran appreciation at San Hollow. So all the flags you get um, are American Jeep, uh, like the classic orange. They are an American flag, which I think is just really special. Um, right. And then there is a veterans trail where it's called the fallen and every obstacle is named after a different war. And there's certain military figures as well, pla with plaques on the different obstacles. So you'll go oh. through Vietnam, World War One, World War Two, And it's just really interesting. Like you have a feeling as you're going through it. And I will tell you, the obstacles are so hard. So you're also trying to focus on, you know, I think honoring these soldiers and then you start thinking about each war, but then you're also trying to get through the war of each obstacle. Uh, cause it can be, it was so challenging. Um, that day was very challenging. Um, and then there is a big memorial at the very top, um, where you, they built these steps and then you go up and, uh, there's flags up there and a lot of memorabilia passed down from other military, um, soldiers or, um, just veterans that are coming through and doing their own ride. Um, and they leave a piece in honor of somebody else. So it's really, it's almost like its own little grotto up there. Um, I like that. So That's a really cool idea. It is. It was really neat to see. And I think this is a segue off of that. Um, trail hero was developed by a local four by four shop owner named Milt Thompson, who first ran the event, um, on a challenging trail in San hollow, Utah. I don't know if it was the fallen, but honestly, I think every trail in San hollow is challenging. So utilizing his Jeep willies and it has since grown into a large event that we see today. So I think this is the ninth year, eighth or ninth year that they're oh, doing okay. it. And it really tries to aim at raising awareness, um, for not only just access to the public lands, but for, to support the veterans and people with special needs. So it gets everybody out. So you have trail rides ranging from mild to wild with an epic concert every night. I know uh, Montgomery Gentry is going to be there, uh, Ooh. this week. Yeah. Um, that would be fun. I know. Right. And an epic vendor show. Nemesis is out there right now. Spring Nemesis. I have to do that JT. Um, but everyone's there and, um, I'm hoping one day maybe we can all go there. It'd be fun. That People would be nice. All the things. So it's, it gets real wild. Very, very wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, San Hollow, you've been out. I think you said I may not be following. You're fine. <laughs> you've been to San Hollow before, correct? Yes. The San Hollow. I just okay. did it uh, with High Life Expeditions back in May. We did our, our big, right. um, like our, like all inclusive trip where we ship everybody out via rail car. We land in Vegas, your Jeeps are there. Then we made our way to San hollow. Amazing. Oh, I love that. I love <laughs> that. And how close cool. is San hollow to Moab? So to Moab, it's about, Oh gosh, I think it's two and a half hours. Maybe I know oh, from I Salt Lake, that. it's okay. about four hours. Um, maybe we'll say three, maybe we'll, we'll call it three. Cause I know okay. Salt Lake to Moab's four hours. It's on each side of the state. So I'm guessing. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. That yeah. would be one that I definitely want to do in the future. Yes. Um, this fall season is going to be a little bit, uh, slim with my trips, but I think yes. next year is going to be a pretty big year for me. I understand me too. I have three yeah. trips coming up, um, all within like four weeks of each other. Um, oh and then the Jeep is going to go to rest again. So here we are. Um, the shakedown is on Saturday and then, um, an all shop ride cleanup ride for where, um, another trip we're going to be doing it in November is going to be. So we always try to help clean up the trails as much as possible. Um, and as a shop, we try to go out as a family as much as we can. Unfortunately, it doesn't get to happen a lot, but we try. So, yeah, I think that's very important. You just, so there's a sense of, of camaraderie and, and you're working together during the week, but then when you actually have fun together, it, 
it creates a different sense of family. It does. So I like it that. does. And we just had a couple guys get some Jeeps too. So it makes it kind of fun. And they've been building them at the same time. Like I was building mine and in between working on mine. Um, and now we all get to finally go out as a fam. So oh, unfortunately, Michael's going to miss it. Uh, I, cause his Jeep is my favorite big Brown. Um, I actually posted about big Brown today. That's the Jeep that made me fall back in love with wheeling again. Um, that 2013 limited edition Brown color. I love when Jeep comes out with something cool. So just like yeah. how we just talked about with the 41 concept, um, I think at least just for a year, bring out something fun um, and then then you have it. So it's like that rare gold gem or brown gem. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And I yeah. actually loathe brown cars. I don't like them at all. Sorry any if anyone has them. So when I first found out about this brown Jeep that they call big brown, I was like, what? Like, no, like you have a brand like no and then i saw it for the first time and oh my gosh well now you can't get me right. away from it <laughs> so, yeah yeah i go out and talk well, to I'm, her you know <laughs> i love the earl gray earl gray jeep i love the yes. color the accent colors that you can put with it are there's just you're not limited i don't think i would ever buy one i don't know why but um if i were to get another jeep it'd probably be white but the Ooh, earl I can see gray, that. every time i yeah. Every time I see that real great gym, like, dang, that looks good. I know. Right. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I love it for everyone else. So I know what you mean. Um, I, I, I think if I ever were to get another one, I would go back to yellow. Yellow was my first one. Um, and so I think I would go back to yellow and now I'm seeing a lot more yellow ones coming back. I'm, you know, like monster builds and, uh, mm -hmm. Jeremy from rock crawler just built a co-build with sappy off road. And oh my gosh, that's going to trail hero right now. And Oh my, I just, it's amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, I They're love calling it. it Nacho oh, and, and Nacho is pretty cool. <laughs> so yes, I like it's that. Jeep name. I know. I know. We keep saying that we're going to have a whole episode about talking about Jeep names. We really but need to. <laughs> I know. I know. But I, I think that's one of the things that I like looking at. Now, last weekend for the Mesquite Elks Lodge, and they had oh, yeah. about 70 Jeeps show up, which was great. Um, Charlie did not win the off-road category, but oh, that's no. okay. We'll take our yeah. losses where we can, it's okay. but you know, it's for, it's for a good cause. Yes. So, um, I think one of the things that I love to see when we go out there are the Jeep names and yeah. people come up with, so there is a, um, couple that we wheeled with in hot springs and they also showed up at this fundraiser and he is from Australia. So oh, cool. he, his Jeep is named the bad Roo pecan. Oh my gosh. And it's R O O, which I think is super cute. So that is really yeah, cute. I love seeing some creative, you know, play on words, puns. I love those. Um, you know, mine's just Charlie, so I can't really, I don't have a whole, I mean, mine's gypsy. Talk, so I get story. It. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole story behind it, but I love seeing the ones that have like cute names, puns, and then there's a whole thing to it. So absolutely. I, I mean, Charlie, you do have your Epic mug right now. Like I you got to show us. Thank you. It's my top gun. I'm trying to keep the glare from on it, but it's my top gun mug. Um, Charlie is part of the top gun family. <laughs> so, uh, that is where her concept came from. So absolutely. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Janet, I feel like, you know, we've talked about this before about having an episode about Jeep names. So I feel like mm -hmm. this could be a great opportunity for us to have our own round table zoom call. We want to invite you as a listener yeah. to come on and it's an easy topic. We all can talk about Jeep names. Um, and it's yes. super approachable because we're approachable, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I would love to talk about anything. We I want mean, everybody from you has guys. a story. Yeah. Yes. And that's and I think that's my favorite part about the Jeep name. Like you were just talking about how with Charlie and Top Gun and um her character from the film and Kelly McGillis. And I mean, it's such a strong, powerful female character, especially, you know, early on in the eighties. And we needed that character, right? Right. Um, I know for Absolutely. me, like it's the gypsy soul moment, not necessarily all the gypsy characteristics, but uh, Van Morrison said it best. So that's where I keep it um, as well as um, from the comic book series. So anyway, but yes, we want to hear from you. Send an email info at jeeptalkshow.com. Um, but we are thinking about hosting a round table. So definitely drop it in the comments. If you want to hear from us like that, um, we would love to do it. So maybe we just we go for it, you know, yeah, Use absolutely. Pedal and go for it. Yep. Just send it. Right. That's what just we say. Just send, send it. it. 
Full oh send, God. give it the beans. And everybody has this, you know, passionate story or it's, it's a meaningful name, or maybe it's just yeah. you picked it out of a hat. Who knows? So yes. it was a dare, but we still want to hear about it. So let us know. We'll talk it's about funny. it. With you. There's so many Jeep groups, right? On social media, which is honestly yeah. how I found High Lift was because of a Jeep group. Um, and so many people get on when they first get their Jeep and say, you know, what should I name it? And I love when people say, it'll come to you. Just start driving it. Start just embracing the culture and then all of a sudden it comes to you. So I thought Absolutely. that was so great that people say that because I want to tell people that like your name will actually just pop in your head one night. So, or in the morning. It will. You and I feel like it's such a personal decision too. You know, whatever, you know, it can be like trials and tribulations that you've gone through and what has gotten you yes. through that, or it's, you know, a symbol for yourself or for your family or for whatever it may be, but we want to hear your story. So let us know and we can have you on the show. We can talk about it. Let us know. I think, okay. Yeah. So here's my last Jeep name of someone that's kind of a favorite for me around here. Cause it's because it's uh, Nemo. So he's a Nemo Jeep and it's white with orange accents, but he always wears a Nemo onesie. <laughs> he, it just makes me laugh. Um, and I just, and he brings a lot of joy. Like there's so many theme jeepers in this area. So Nemo, um, that is a good one to me because, because of the onesie, I mean, he embraces all of it. Um, yes. there's another girl, the commitment the to the theme. I there love is it. There's such a commitment around here. Like, yeah. I don't know if you have that where you are, but mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, it is strong. So, oh, I'm so glad it's not just in Southwest Ohio it's, because it, no, be it is down here in Texas. And then of course, when Halloween rolls around or, oh, you know, God, Christmas, the, you know, those giant skeletons that they're selling at Home Depot, like yes. they are sticking out of people's Jeeps. Like, oh my gosh. It is a thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I used to decorate the Jeep, you know, back when I had more time, I used to decorate the Jeep. And my daughter asked me this year, like, are we going to decorate the Jeep? I'm like, we'll put the skeleton in the passenger seat. How about that? Like, I like I it. Just, the 20 yeah. foot or like a normal size? No, it's a normal. He's fluorescent green. So oh, fun. He'll, he'll sit there. But, you know, the number of zip ties it takes to put stuff on the outside of your Jeep, I just... You know, that's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, I'm the queen of when I try to open my zip tie bag, it explodes oh, everywhere. Gosh. So there's yes. that. So yeah. <laughs> when the rubber band gets too far down the zip tie and all of them fall out, they just go everywhere. Thing. It's yeah. great. It's great. I know. Well, Janet, do you have anything coming up this week? You're going to be anywhere where we can find you? No, I actually don't have anything going on, but just a reminder, the rubber duck regatta in Rockwall is going to happen October 12th. You have two weeks to buy your duck. For $10, you can win a brand new Wrangler that is lifted, ready to go off-road. Um, so go to rockwallduckrace.org, and it's happening on October 12th. You have until that afternoon to buy your duck. Uh, I won't be there personally. I have a conflict, but I really don't have any Jeep-related events going on these next couple weeks. Um, we're busy with, like, you know, high school football games. Oh, yeah. You know, it's Texas. Like <laughs> it is Texas. Texas. They're a big deal. They're a big deal. <laughs> right? Absolutely. What do, you, what do you have going on? So I will be in Hollerwood, guys, on October the 5th. So if you are at Red River Gorge, love to see you. Um, we're going to be there actually for two weekends in a row. So October 5th and October 12th. October 12th is the cleanup ride uh, presented by Ohio River Four Wheelers, Kentucky Crawlers, and High Lift will be there along with some other shops as well. Um, and then we go on a break for a minute. So it'll be nice. And then November uh, 2nd and 3rd will be the meet and greet back down in Hollerwood. So it's a lot Fun. of Hollerwood coming up. That's our home park, essentially. Um, and Flex Rocks and Rollovers and Mr. Carnage and um, Rock Jock were actually just did a big Hell and Back adventure. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, it's been all over YouTube. Highly recommend those three episodes. They are all over my park. Um, and I was just so proud because it it destroyed them at one point. So Kentucky oh, owned it. They really did. So yes. definitely check them out. Um, if you haven't, if you need a good YouTube to put on the background in the garage or in the bathroom or wherever your heart desires, flex rocks and rollovers, <laughs> big shout out stream. to Mr. Carnage. So <laughs> yes, after you watch our episode, then you after can you go watch over our episode, and watch those, right. <laughs> those other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it for this episode of Chick Chat. We hope you've been inspired by the stories, insight, tips that we shared today. Remember, there are no limits to what you can achieve when you embrace your passion and fearlessly chase your dreams. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to the Jeep Talk Show so you'll never miss an episode again. We want to hear that bell. Like and subscribe. Remember, embrace the thrill of the off-road, embody your own unique style, and always keep pushing the boundaries of what you thought possible because anything is possible. Anything is possible. Thanks, Love guys. <laughs> Bye.
Broadcasting since 2010. The cats behave themselves this time. Oh, I think <laughs> feeding did. him early. I was looking for mine to try to wave goodbye, and I couldn't find him. <laughs> I know, and good idea that feeding him a little bit early kind of just shut him up until we could get through the episode. So, thank oh, God. the bellowing's the best. Oh, thank you, Janet. You're having a great week. I appreciate you. You're my friend. You're my new friend. <laughs>